What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Let's get you in the building. Christopher, Allen in the building. All right, my guy. Uh, Canada, Canada native, Canada's own. So you, uh, so you, you, you back in the States? Oh, yeah, I spend pretty much all my trucking is done in the States. That's, that's where they send me. Okay, okay, okay. So you, but let me, let me make sure I get this clear. You're still, your residence is still up in Canada, though. That's right. Yep, I live uh, in the Maritimes, Atlantic Canada. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, bro, you getting the miles in, like, from, oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. from, from yeah, bro. Canada all the way down to the, the Texas? That got to be at yeah, least. My... That, how, I, as far as hours go, how, as far as hours, what's the hours on that? Um. Well, I picked up a load of uh, potatoes. Mm -hmm. in uh, New Brunswick. So that's uh, between Nova Scotia and Quebec. Mm -hmm. And I had a fresh clock at 70 hours. And I delivered yesterday morning, and I got 22 hours left. So, Damn. yeah, that's like, what, 40-ish uh, 40 40 40 hours, hours, bro? And that's, and, that's, and that's just one load from Canada all the way down to Texas. And we do that all the time, man. I do uh, the company I work for. It's a reefer company. Okay. And we do a lot of like a lot of our stuff is brokerage stuff. So like we our dispatchers surf the load boards and find good stuff. Like our loads are always heavy too. Yeah, you know that, I mean, like our, that, that, that is good. That like, that is good miles and heavy. So you, so you 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 from from Canada to to Texas. Jesus Christ, bro! That's uh, that's way over uh, three thousand miles, ain't it? Uh, I'll tell you exactly here in one second. Let me just look at my paperwork. It was uh, oh, there. um, that envelope go. I just. There it is. So this load was 3,972 kilometers, and in miles, that is 2,462 miles. Damn. 2,400. And that's what we do all the time. I've been, and like, that's, I run. And that's there and back, right? Oh, that's just there. That's just here. Oh, that's just there. That's one way. Okay, but I'm just saying, don't you, don't you get a reload that will take you right back up into Canada? Yes. Yeah, so, that's the way it has to work. With the laws, with us Canadians, we're not allowed to do any interstating or anything like that, or else you guys will be right on us. So we have to, we can only bring loads from Canada down here, and we can only take loads to Canada back. So okay, so that's that's why I'm sitting in Houston for, since yesterday because I'm. A dispatch still trying to find me something to get out of here. Okay. So that's still so okay, okay, so let me get this let me let me get this straight in my head because I'm thinking like in a week's period, so this so this twenty plus hundred miles is one week on your settlement. Am I correct? Pretty much. Uh well from Thursday to Monday. Mm -hmm. I started this load Thursday afternoon of last week, and I got here. I should have been here. Well, it's on a Tuesday. Sorry, it was supposed to deliver Monday at lunchtime in Houston, but I had a little bit of mechanical problems, so I ended up getting uh, we pushed back the appointment till Tuesday morning. Okay. So from Thursday night, and I didn't load until five o'clock Thursday night, and then delivered at like seven o'clock yesterday morning. So, so like five days. Wow, bro. Man, yeah, we that's, gotta run hard, man. We, that's we're crazy. Not so miles every day. So let me let me ask you okay, this, Chris. I'm I'm not trying to be nosy. Yeah. I'm not trying to I'm not trying oh, to pick no. and see how much you making, bro. But let's just say <laughs> a person that wants to come and work for your company and runs those type of miles, you they can they can earn in a year 
about 90 plus. I don't want to say six well, figures, but I'll I'll give it 90. Yeah. They can earn 90 plus with with I running. Wish, bro. You uh, know that's that's funny you say that because I was having that conversation with like the senior driver, you know, and it's like you know, it never it doesn't work it never works out that way because like right now like I don't have a load out of here yet. And this happens a lot. Like I'll do a load somewhere and then I'll end up sitting for a day and a half somewhere, you know, and then it's like every time I finish a load, it's like day and a half you know very often is there a turn and burn with this company and it's because we're very much dependent on the load boards and you know the and the right right now with the way things are going with the freight market it's it's tough right so uh there is a lot too a little bit too much sitting time sometimes and sometimes you don't mind you know like like i didn't need to do a reset i still had like 20 hours left plus i got recapped so i don't need to do a reset right now but at the rate things are going, by like 10 o'clock tonight, I'm going to have my reset in. And uh, they just called me and asked if I, you know, I, I was supposed to be heading home. Because, mm-hmm. like, before I took this load, I was out for three and a half weeks straight. And then I went home, and I was only home two and a half days. And they called me and said, well, we got a load, you know, go potatoes going down Texas. You want it? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. And the idea was I was just going to get, like, a reload and go back home and kind of take a few more days off but now they're asking me will you what if we have to find you something up to calgary and i said okay you mean uh i guess i'll do that and then i said from calgary i said i don't want to right now it's not the time of year you want to be driving all the way back home across canada right to calgary because we've already got like snow and shit going on up there Mm -hmm. so i said well from calgary will you send me send me back down to texas and that's something we do too like i uh this is my third time down to texas in the last month you know, I brought, uh, I did a load out to Calgary from Toronto, and then I brought down a load of uh, McDonald's French fries that we make up in Canada down to Dallas. And then from Dallas, I took a bunch of stuff back to Canada. So, uh, yeah, that's, they keep us busy, man. Like, they, I mean, I don't know about no 90 grand, you know. That's, that's, that's the unfortunate part. Like, it's just, it's the consistency of, like, you know, like running all the time hard, like, you do, you get a good load and then, mm-hmm. you know, a day and a half off kind of thing in between, you know, and then Very, I think I, like it's still, still, is some, realistic. still some good runs though. I mean, you know, I, Hey, it's still some good runs, bro. I mean, don't, don't hate now. Gotta keep in mind too. Like <laughs> I'm a, I've only been driving a year, so I'm still getting mm-hmm. like new driver pay. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. Help either. So next yeah. year, next year you would get your raise pretty much. Well, I'm thinking about asking for. I was just talking to my senior driver today about that. I was, I was kind of thinking about asking for it sooner because, man, like I, you know, I went into a Flying J in in Mississippi and I bought like a couple little bottles of Dr Pepper or whatever, and uh, on my bank card, you know, and it cost me like five dollars and change in the in the, in the Flying J. Mm-hmm. And then I come out and I look on my phone, right, and you know, with the exchange rate, like it costs a dollar thirty six Canadian to buy one U S dollar. Them two little balls of Dr. Pepper cost me like almost eight dollars. God damn it, man! And, and, I, and I said, you know, like that's the problem is I get paid in Canadian money, but I spend all my time down here in the U.S. So I'm right, like, we we I'm need to convert money. that. Yeah. So wait, so for every dollar Canadian, it's a dollar thirty-eight U.S. Cost me a dollar thirty-six Canadian to buy one U.S. dollar. Yeah. Oh, a dollar thirty six Canadian for every dollar US. That's correct. Oh, god damn it, man. Don't 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 go on the don't go on the uh don't go on the splurge down here, bro. <laughs> I know, man. I know. Uh, yeah, but I do sometimes, you know. Like I'm a single guy, so it's you I mean I don't spend the whole paycheck, but yeah, I do, this, this try I do to sometimes. This this try to this try next time you come down, make sure you get about forty. And just keep the forty in your pocket because you can't afford you you can't afford no no eighty. <laughs> the thing is, brother, that you know, with the inflation problem that's going on, like things are. When I was a kid, you know, we used to come mm-hmm. like because I grew up in the Toronto area, and we used to go down to Buffalo and things to buy clothing and buy beer and buy tires for our cars because everything was so much cheaper in the states. But now with inflation. The prices on things down here are equal, if not even sometimes, like, more than it is in Canada. Damn it, man. The prices are skyrocketing. That's crazy. And then on top of that, 
it costs me thirty percent more, right? So, plus we don't get paid. Like I don't know, you know, I see on the back of trucks down here, mm-hmm. you know, we're hiring and seventy cents a mile and all that, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you straight up, like as a new driver, and I get paid actually a good rate for a new driver in Canada. I only get fifty cents a mile. Ouch! But the exchange yeah. rate is Ouch. different when you come when you call across right. the border, though. All right, I hey, get paid in Canadian dollars, and I spend all my money in American dollars. So it's <laughs> you hurt, know, man. right? Hey, let me uh, hang tight, Chris. We'll jump right into the scam. Down in Houston in a minute. Let me go ahead and uh, get from behind this dock and we'll get right back at it. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. So you down in Houston, uh yep. at, at at the at the flying J. Now let yes, me sir. now are you at the flying J that's over there by the loves? Uh, I don't know. I don't think, I'm not sure about that. I'm on, it's on the, just off the 45. It's in North Houston. Like, so I'm basically right at the top of the city, um, on the 45 headed for Dallas. Okay. Mate, I'm, I'm probably familiar where you at because I know, I, I know that there's an area of Houston that I, that I it's near the airport, I think, cause there's uh planes flying over all the time. Oh, okay, okay. Then you probably might not be there, but there's, yeah, there's a pilot. There's a couple of mom and pops. Uh, there's a loves right there, and this in the area where lot lizards be running rampant. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, uh, know. I uh, haven't seen the, I haven't seen that here, but uh, there's been some other things going on here, but no lot lizards. Well, we about Some's to get it, we, I, uh... we we about to get into that, bro. So what what, what kind of scamming? What, what what you you sent me a few pictures, and I'm 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 looking at them, and I'm like, well, what's going on here? So, talk to me, bro. What's 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 going on? Okay, so it all started. You know, I got unloaded first thing yesterday morning, and uh, not too far away from here. So it's just about like five or six miles away. So I uh, you know I sent my paperwork through the dispatch, and I said, well, you got nothing for me yet. I'm gonna head to the closest truck stop. So this was it. So I come up here and uh, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, right? So I pull in and then, you know, it was kind of wide open at that time. So I just grabbed, like, I just pulled into a reserve spot for the time being, just until I talk to dispatch and figure out whether they got something for me today or, or I mean, well, yesterday anyways. Um, so nothing's happening without. So I sat there for a bit, had a little nap. And around 2 o'clock or so, I get up and I look around. And I'm like, well, you know, there's lots of open regular spots. like. Prime parking's not a big deal. Like, my company's good about that. They understand that there's huge parking shortage. So they'll actually reimburse us for prime parking. So, like, I do pay for it on occasion. But I saw that there was lots of, like, regular spots. So I moved the truck. And, uh, you know, whatever. I figure I'm okay, I'm here for the day anyways. So around 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, there's a knock on the window. I look down, and there's a security guard there. And he's... He's fully uniformed, and he's got a little security card and everything. And uh, I said, what's up, man? He says, you know, are you going to pay for this spot? I said, what do you mean pay for this spot? He's like, yeah, you're going to pay me for this spot? And I said, bro, there ain't no reserved uh, painting on the, the ground. There's no – usually, like, you know, every Flying J is a little different. Sometimes if you're backing up towards a curve, they got the sign that says, you know, reserve parking. And they got it <clears> – sorry, painted on the ground. There was none of that, right? So I said, this ain't, this ain't prime parking, bud. I said, and he was like, oh, well, it washed away. And I said, well, you know, I mean, if it washed away, it washed away for every spot here. So I don't know about that, but, you know, so he kind of just went away. He didn't really make a big deal about it. But I, I was, like I said, I, I'm kind of new to this a little bit. So I was talking to my senior driver this morning. He said, you know, he saw that you had Canadian plates and he's just trying to scam you, man. I said maybe you never know, right? That's that's what so, I'm thinking. I, I'm 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 kind of thinking that because you can see at any flying J that you park at, there will be postings. If not on a sign, it will be on the ground. Like you will receive, you will see reserve parking on the ground. Or on the sign, at least this is from my experience. I mean, every time, 
every time I go to a Flying J in Park, because, you know, my company's good with that, too. And I, I yeah. see, you know, I, I see reserved parking. Yeah. Bro try to bro try yeah. to pull one over you, man. So are you are you sure he was part of a flying J security? I mean, did you did you get out to yeah, go in there? Around. He's like I'm still there. He's around. He's like he works here. He's been around like all that well, it might be a different guy, but the car has been around and uh, just doing his doing his thing, driving around, I guess, for protection and for whatever else. But when I called customer service, I said, look, I said, uh, you know, this guy come up and asked me to pay him for prime parking. I said, I don't know what's going on with that because there's no markings on the ground here at all for any of these spots. Uh, but at the same time, because like I said, my company will reimburse me for prime parking. I don't want any hassle. I don't need that in the middle of the night, somebody knocking on your window, whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to book a spot. And they're like, okay. And they see on my account, like, you know what I mean? I buy a lot of fuel there. I, get, I do get prime parking. So the guy's like, you know what? I'm going to give you one for free. I said, awesome. All right. I appreciate okay. that. So they, they they gifted the one to me. They sent me the uh, the receipt right to my email, which I, you know, printed out, stuck on the window. So I'm like, okay, you know, good to go. So after I hung up with the customer service, I called the store. And mm -hmm. this is where, like, the attitude started. I got oh, this lady see. on the phone. I said, look, uh, I just want to ask you a question. I said, you know, like, uh. What did your security guards just come up and ask me to pay him for prime park? So the store tells me, the lady says, I was asking her about the security guard and what's up with that. And I said, why are you trying to charge people prime parking in spots that aren't, aren't indicated as reserved? And she said, you, everybody who parks here has got to pay. So well, what are you talking about? She said, if you're going to be coming here for just a couple hours, that's fine. Or if you're here to get fuel. But if you're staying overnight, she's like, everybody pays. Huh? I said, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Okay, said, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's back up for a minute. Let's, you know, red flags is going off or, you know, alarm bells is going off in my head for starters when the dude or the security guard said that you had to pay him. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, who, mm -hmm. who does that? Let me explain. Let, who, who does that, bud? Like. I'm not paying you, you know, I'm not giving you any money, bruh. I'm not doing that. You know, I'll go in there, I will pay, get a receipt, be done, you know, but I'm not paying you. But now you saying that this flying J, make sure you give text me the address, all right? This flying J. I'll tell you right now. This flying J up in North Houston says that. If you there for a couple of hours, you good to go. But if you there for your 10 hour or overnight, you have to pay regardless of where you park at. That's that's what you're telling me. That's right. That's exactly what she said. <clears throat> so, you know, I wasn't worried because I I did get the free prime parking and I, I put the thing in the window. And, and she even gave me a hard time about that, like. You know, sometimes I don't go in the store, you know, I mean, if I maybe got fuel or whatever, but I'm at the back of the lot, you know, too. Like, some of these ones in Texas, like, they they do prime parking, but, you know, in some flying J's, they put the prime parking right near the stores. So, yeah, I was just saying, so I was talking to her, and uh, I said, okay, well, look, I just wanted to find out, make sure everything was on the up and up, because I thought it was unusual that the security guard come up asking for money and, uh, you know, about the parking, and then she told me, you know, if you talk, you got to pay. And I said, I mean, everybody? She says, everybody. And I said, no, no matter where, no, no matter where you park that, you, 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 no, no matter where you park that, you, you, you had to pay. That's right. If you park here and you stay in overnight, you got to pay us. Wow. And this is, and this is, so, the fly, and this is the, this is a flying J, not a pilot. This is a flying J in North Texas or North Houston. Um, it is. Yeah, it's a flying J. Wow, bro. Yeah, that that is some scammy shit right there. That that is. Is it is it posted anywhere that you have? I mean, is it is it posted anywhere that you have to pay for parking there? No. No, and that was my point. I said, you know, you need to put up a big-ass sign when you first pull in saying, 
overnight parking needs to pay. Cause that, you know, we've all seen that and I've paid certain places, you know, like to pay, you know, if you want to park here, you got to pay. That's, and that's fine. You accept that, but no, there's no sign here. And then she started giving me a big nightmare about the receipt I got, like, which is the one that customer service sends you, which is like a, you know, a full on receipt. This is the same one I send to my, my billing department to get reimbursed. And I find with it, she says, well, you got to come in and get our little stupid ticket. I said, well, no, I'm good. I got this one here already taped to the window. Well, that ain't going to work. She says, we got procedures. And if you don't follow our procedures, you're going to get a knock on the window in the middle of the night. I'm like, well, you just come on over and knock on the middle of the night. And then you do what you want to do. Of course, you know, after the other thing was, you know, all the trucks beside me, I was looking at them throughout the night because, you know, I get up to get up to you know, stuff. And uh, I didn't see anybody else who had any, you know, thing taped to their windows. So I think a lot of guys just let it go. Now, that other picture I sent you today, which I know wasn't very good because the guy was far off. I moved after I, I went, I got bored. So I went and I got fuel and then I came to even farther in the back of the lot and I found a different spot. And where that picture was that I took today of that guy, that's where I was parked yesterday. So they got this guy out with his template and a bunch of spray paint. And he's now going around. Like they have some, a lot of spots. Like this place has like, I think 210 parking spots. It said, and there was like 80% of them have reserved on them. This guy's now going around and making all the other spots reserved. So, like, this place is going to be like Club Met or something. Like, you've got a book. Wait, and the wait, is to come here. bro. They, they doing it like that? Oh, no, man. No, no, man. They, 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 got, they got bro, man. They got bro man out there with a yellow spray paint, spray painting lines and and marking it as a reserve parking. Are you serious? Yep. 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 Oh, that that, that is some scam. Right that that is some scam shit, man. Make sure you make make sure you definitely send me the address so I I can post that in the in the description, bro. That's 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 not cool. So. There's no now. There's no signs at all uh, pertaining to reserve parking at that flying jet. Nope. Nope. There's there's no nope. mark at the time you was there. There was no markings on the ground that indicated reserve parking. Not on those spots. The directly across from me. Yeah, those ones were marked reserved, and that's why I moved out of one of those around like like mm. two o'clock yesterday because they said, I figured, well, I don't need to pay because there's plenty of free ones, right? So, you know, I mean, but the thing I started getting a little bit worried was around the time the security guard came around, it was like six o'clock or so, and the truck stop was filling up. And I'm mm. like, well, damn, now I gotta, if I don't wanna have to deal with this stuff, like, I'm gonna have to go find another spot, which there, at this time of day, there ain't many left. And, uh, that's why I just said you don't know, have the heck with it. I'll just I'll just pay for a spot and then it'll be done with it. Not have to worry about it. It's seventeen bucks here, right? And uh, which is whatever. It's still seventeen bucks, right? And uh, I was like, fine. Now, you know, this I'm looking down here like there's well, this guy's just gone and painted. He's done at least thirty or forty spots in the last couple hours since he started. There's a bunch of guys who are either sleeping or you know, or maybe they parked the truck and they've gone home or whatever. Who, when they parked their truck, there was no spray paint on the ground. They're right, going to come but, back. But now and, when they come back or when they, they wake up, it's, 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 it's spray painted reserve and you got to pay. Wow. That's right. Or, you know, and I don't know what they do here. Like, I don't know what the final outcome is. I was up in uh, Oklahoma City one time, and the guy in the store told me, he goes, if you don't pay and we come knock on your window in the middle of the night, you either gonna pay or we're gonna call the hook. Right. And like, now, really? now don't get me now don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm cool with with uh truck stops and travel stops. Let's call them what they are. I'm cool with them well, saying, Hey, you know, you gotta pay to park, and if you don't pay to park, I'm I, I understand the consequences. You know, a lot of it's unfortunate, a lot of truck drivers. Don't seem to understand that concept, but but yep. me, yep. I I understand it. I mean, I, I number one, I don't want to get told. Number two, I don't want to get booted or anything like that. So if I gotta pay for the spot, I'll 
you know, I'll pay for the spot. But this right here, this is some bummy, this some bum ass, this some bum ass scammy shit going on right now. And I I would I think so. now, you know, some of the pilots and the flying jays are franchise owned. So that means, you know, they they have a separate owner from corporate. But still, if if I were you, I I, I would check into that, bro. I, I would check into that. I, I would um I would check into that. I would call and um uh, and 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 see, you know, see what the policy is about for starters. You know, I, I would call I think it goes with I think it's a hundred percent that this is franchise owned because Mm-hmm. The guy who I talked to in customer service, he had no idea about that. You know, he was like, "Oh, okay, then was, yeah, he didn't probably." See nothing. But you could tell by his voice, he was kind of like, "Hmm, really?" You know, you could tell that he was like, even in his own mind, he's like, "That's some shady shit going on." That there. is, that is, that is, that is some shady stuff right there. And that's that's not cool. That's number one is making the flying jays making the flying jays look bad, considering, but. Yeah, if the, if that's franchise owned, then of course you know the 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 franchise owner could pretty much do what he want to do. So, but still, though, I'll tell you, the, this is uh, Flying J number seven two nine, mm-hmm. and it's located at Interstate forty five and Ritchie Road here in North Houston. Yeah, let's let's not mess with that. Let's uh, let's not mess with yeah. uh let's not mess with that flying J drivers. Let's not let's and not mess with that, that one. Mm-mm. There's a lot of uh, hot shotters come here mm-hmm. with their various types of little trailers they got. And I've been watching these guys since I've been here yesterday. They come in, they drop their trailer in a spot, and then they go with a little pickup truck and go off and do whatever they want to do for the day. And then mm-hmm. they come back and you know, I mean, like, they, I mean, that's fair. There, I mean, they got to park somewhere too, right? It's just you know, I mean, this they, flying they, they J sounds like, like th- this flying J sounds like, uh, you know, I, I guess again, like I said, it's it's franchise owned. So being that it's franchise owned, the owner is probably charging for them to drop their trailers as well. You you Maybe. think? Okay. Well, as long as you're, if you're paying, then you should be able to do whatever you want with that spot for the night. Right. You know what I mean? But you don't see a lot of well. You do and you don't, you know. You see places, some truck stops for guys will, and I kind of hate that. You know, you're trying to find a parking spot and you go in somewhere and there's a whole bunch of drop trailers there. You know, some companies mm-hmm. using it as an extension of their yard because they don't got any room left at their place, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I haven't, I can't really say that's the situation here. But anyways, just to, you know, Ooh. just to be going around and like telling people, you know, oh, you, uh, just because it don't say reserved, it's still reserved. And, and even the fact of making every spot in the whole place reserved, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. You know, this place, this is like, uh, this is the kind of place that makes it funny. Well, maybe they don't make a lot of money off diesel. I don't know. But they sure But they sure is making their money off the off, off the reserved spots. You know I mean, you know, $17, 17, $17 a pop. That's crazy. That's just, that's just as worse as the uh, Atlanta Petro. They 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 charge you for coming into the lot about twenty five dollars, and if it ain't nowhere to park back there, and you got to park in the reserve spot, that's another eighteen dollars right there. So you looking Damn. at about you looking at about thirty you looking at about forty bucks for an overnight, bro. And that well, you know they say that you know for the twenty five if you if you buy some food or whatever, you know you can. Um, you can um, what do you call it? You 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 can bypass the twenty five dollars, but the reserve spot is eighteen, and that's you know that's yeah you you have to uh, pay that. But that's that's some scammy stuff right there, bro. And I'm glad you uh I'm glad you called in, and I'm glad we was able to get that out there, man, because you know <laughs> scams in parking lots happens all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I. I am full. I'm all for the 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 truck. I mean the truck uh, stops. You know, doing what they do just to you know charge us. But to do what they did in your case, no, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. All no, right. I don't think so you know, and I, I was, and I, it's 
you know, I've, there's only like four or five U.S. states that I haven't been to yet. So I've kind of, I've had my opportunity to experience a lot of different. And you know, if, I'll be honest. If I'm on the road, I, I prefer the rest areas, depending on which state you're in. So yeah, a lot, others, a, a lot of us know, prefer that. I, I, but, you know, but only like in a situation where I don't know how long I'm going to be here, mm-hmm. I'll come to one of these places. But uh, well, you know, you not know, to, you is, you uh, know not to go up to that uh, flying J up in North Houston. <laughs> it's not even, and it's not even just Houston. Like it's just I was saying to somebody else the other day, like you know, I don't want to disparage Texas, but like you know, between Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston, like it's a pain in the butt. Like I decided to do a layover in the uh, the Flying J or the pilot, whichever it was in, uh, I think it's called Oak Cliff or Oak Ridge. I think it's Oak Cliff, which turns out somebody was telling me about the fact is one of the dangerous neighborhoods in uh, Dallas. But anyways, that place, when you were talking about lot lizards, that place, I had dudes banging on my door, like oh, the same dude over and over again. I need money to take my family to Streamport. I had some ladies selling like chicken dinners, banging on my door. Today I've had some dude banging on the door trying to him and his little bicycle were gonna like clean my tires and rims. You know, it's like I don't know, you don't see this in other states, but I mean that's mean, that's that was... that's kinda aggravating. I mean, especially like if <laughs> like I, I I used to well, it's been a minute since I've been down that way, but Lamar route uh route seventy eight, Lamar in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, that little strip right there. You got you you got the pilot, you got two pilots of Flying J. I mean, no, I'm sorry. You got two pilots of Mike's bullshit ass truck stop and loves right down the street, bro. That's all that that's all it is in the middle of the night, man. It is is knock after knock after knock after knock. And the shit is so fucking irritating. You be like, bro. You you want to put on your damn door. Do not knock on my fucking door. I mean, yeah, it's, I had to it's stop crazy. In Memphis. I've been through there, but I've seen, uh, I don't know where I saw this list. It was on Facebook or something like that. Some companies put out, uh, like, if you're hauling a high security or a high value. Oh, yeah, load, a hot shot, uh, they, a hot load. Yeah, they'll send you. That my, my, um, my old company used to do that. They used to send it through our tablet. And let us know uh, what what uh, trust stops and what areas not to park at. Yep. Yeah, and Memphis is like number one. <laughs> you say Memphis is number one on the list, huh? Memphis was very yeah. I remember, I remember Memphis on that list. And I was thinking, you know, that was kind of a news, but I've you know, I've seen that like on YouTube, like documentaries about about all the crime in Memphis, and it's it's crazy, you know. It's, I, you know, I mean, I love being down here in the states. I love trucking down here more than in Canada. But you know, you guess uh, you gotta think twice sometimes about where you're gonna stop. You know? Yeah, Chris, you you definitely look, man. Um, first thing first, thank you for coming back on to the uh, podcast, man, and chopping it up with me. I really do appreciate that, Chris, man. I, I definitely want you to stay safe, especially you know, especially you know, being. Uh, you know, being uh, 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 coming across the border, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that you may or may not know, and people see that, and then they try to take advantage of you, like, like how that, uh, that uh, security guard at a uh, flying J try to do you, man. So definitely be on the watch out, man. Make sure you keep your head on a swivel. Uh, you know, make sure you keep your doors locked. Don't, especially if you in areas that you're not familiar with. And this is for everybody. You know, like I said, I, I make fun of Lamar Avenue up in Memphis all the time, but on a ser- I'm being serious that that area right there is lightweight, dangerous. I actually seen uh, a female still, uh, you know, still, uh, a wallet out of this driver's uh out of the driver's cab because he left his wallet in the side pocket of the of the door and when they came over there and they locked on the they knocked on the door he kind of opened it she saw it snatched it up hopped in her pimp's car and 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 ran off with it you know he said he had um I seen him running and I was wondering it was like man what's going on with this dude you know uh 
he came back to my truck and he told me he's like, yeah, you know, somebody just got me for my uh for my wallet, um, and you know this, that, and the third. And I was like, yeah. So, you know, they, you know, in areas like that, you know, Houston, you know, North Houston, uh, the area uh, over there by uh what I was talking about before, uh, that's in Houston. So, yeah, definitely watch yourself, bro. I mean, you know, make sure you put a lock on your on your trailer, on your trailer door, because they, you know, they slide up in there. They snap off the seal, slide up in there. They either see what's in there to take or probably get up in there and, and get some sleep or whatever. Um, but, yeah, man, definitely, definitely watch yourself because, you know, the scammers are out there and they and they looking for drivers like you, man. Oh, yeah. Like uh, a week and a half ago when I was coming back from Texas, I, uh, I was going through Alabama and I went to uh, uh, Tuscaloosa first. Couldn't find a place to park there. Then I kept driving, went through Birmingham, went through a Flying J parking lot. Nowhere to park there, but off in the corner. You know, being about 100 yards away from the fuel island, there's about three or four people just sitting on the curb smoking crack. And I was just like, damn. Wow. So I just kept on, I just kept on trucking. Just man. keep on trucking. Another, another, another 50 miles up the road, there was a rest area and even it was full. Now, Alabama's a tough place to find a parking spot at night, I tell you. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I made I made a little spot in the side and got some sleep. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's. These truck stops, I mean, they're a great place to get fuel, but they are a terrible place to sleep, I tell you. Exactly. All right, Mr. Christopher, well, man. Brother, well, you the time. Hey, no doubt. No, I appreciate you, man. Great conversation as always, man. So go on eat and uh, get you some rest, and uh, we'll get back at it again, bro. Big G's got it locked. Won't you love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Won't you love me real way? Yeah, swim around. Won't you take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Tell you no.